leg length, okay? Because something as simple as leg length discrepancy um, can really aggravate the hip and the low back. So we always want to make sure in standing that we're looking for any anomalies, but also when we have the patient supine. So one way that we can assess real leg length discrepancy is to have the patient supine. I'm going to bend your knees here. Good. I always have the patient just do a bridge, so I want you to lift your bottom up, good, and come back down. That way I make sure that I know that they're even, okay, and that their weight isn't maybe distributed unevenly on the table. Small enough question. Yes. Uh, what's even? Here, what can happen sometimes is the glute can kind of get under them, the soft tissue, or they can just not be lying symmetrical and flat on the table. Uh -huh. So before I start, I just have her bridge up. So when she comes back down, everything is nice and even, gotcha. okay? So what I'm going to do is assess the length of her femur and tibia from this lateral view, okay? So what I'm looking for is if the knee on one side is higher than the other, then I'm thinking the tibia could be longer. If I'm looking at this angle and I see that the knee jets out more forward, I'm thinking the femur is longer on one side. Okay, so that's how we differentiate between tibial length and femoral. She looks good and even, so I don't think she has an issue there. If there is a discrepancy, that's when you would prescribe a heel lift, because we're not going to change the length of the femur or tibia, right? No matter how much we pull and tug, <laughs> we're not going to change it. But a heel lift can dramatically change their gait and make them much more even and take a lot of the load and stress off those tissues from, you know, the asymmetry. Another way we can do it is like we did it in foundations where we take a tape measure and we're palpating ASIS making sure you're either medial or superior just being consistent with where you place the tape measure and then coming down to medial malleolus okay and measuring side to side there okay so those are two ways that we can measure this is something that after patients have a hip replacement you always want to think about because there can be a slight discrepancy that can really throw off their gait. So never neglect the leg length because it's something that you can fix really easily that a lot of um, people overlook. Okay? So that's the, the first second one. one we're going to look at is the Thomas test. So I'm going to have you scoot all the way down toward the edge of the table. Good. All right, you're going to bring your right knee in toward your chest. Good. And I'm going to have you lie back. So I want you to keep that knee pulled in for me. So what are we assessing with Thomas test? Hip flexor, iliopsoas, and rectum length, right? So what do you guys think looking <laughs> at her here? She's already. <laughs> yeah, definitely not tight. Really good length, right, here in the iliopsoas. So let's see if we can bend her a little bit more. How are you feeling? Feel a pull there. Stretch. Yeah, I would say her rec fem is a little bit tight, right? Because she doesn't just naturally go into that knee flexion. And as I start to bring her back, I can feel a little bit of tension there. Now, what other direction do you see her leg being pulled? Laterally. Laterally. So I would assume that her IT band is a little bit tight too. So we can definitely assess that more closely with the Obers test. Okay, now if we did this test and her leg was up here and I give it some overpressure and it's not moving, what's tight? Iliopsoas. Good. If I straighten her leg here and I take rec fem out of it and it still stays, what's tight? Iliopsoas. Good. If I straighten her leg, add that knee extension and her leg drops, rec fem might be tight. Okay? Very good. Okay. Good job. Go ahead and sit up. All right. Next, while you're standing, let's do turn down and burp test. So you're going to stand in front of the glass here. Good. You're going to turn your back toward them. Okay. You're going to lift your shirt up a little bit. All right, good. So I'm not going to stand behind her, but this is where I would assess, okay, because I want you guys to see. So what I want you to do is just stand on one leg. Okay. What are you looking for with Trendel and Burke sign? Hip drop, drop on which side? The stamp the side or contralateral side? Exactly. And if she were to do this, go ahead and do a hip drop. And that were to happen, 
what side is weak? Right. Right. The right side, the stance phase. Good. Or the stance leg. And what muscle group is weak? Abductors, glute medius, glute min. Good job. You can relax. Okay. So during the stance phase of gait, 60% of the gait cycle is stance phase, right? And a huge load is stressed on those abductor muscles. So during stance phase, what happens is when someone has a weak glute mean, your body immediately tries to offload it, right, for stance phase. And that's why you get that pelvis drop on the other side. It's trying to shorten the lever arm, okay, so you get more mechanical advantage. Good. And that's something that you'll notice, too, when people are walking in right away. You'll see it. It's very common after um, people have gone through hip surgery to get the glute mean, specifically hip replacements. And I'm going to okay. have you on your back. Yeah. Okay, and the hamstring tightness, Jason went over last week. We'll just kind of review. So you can do straight leg raise test here, and you're looking at the other side to make sure that this hip flexor isn't popping up and she's not compensating. Oh, come on. I mean, that's <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time in the clinic stretching her hands. Okay? <laughs> so that's a very good excursion. What's normal length? For females, hamstring tightness, someone of her age, 90, yeah, and she far exceeds that, so that's great. So then we can, you know, look at more of the proximal attachment there. I mean, it's great range of motion. So we can do it straight leg raise, bent knee, or straight knee. Okay. So I have her in this position. Next. I'm going to do the favors test, um, which just stands for flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the hip. So I'm going to cross her over this way. I'm going to stabilize on the contralateral ASIS, and I'm going to pull her down. And we found where she's tight. <laughs> Any pain with this? Okay, where do you feel it? It's like right here. Okay. So she's really tight there. It's putting a big stretch on her um, adductors too. Um, so you always want to ask the patient where the pain is. Is it in the hip or is it in the SI joint in the back? Because a positive test can indicate pain in either of those places. It's also called the path jokes test in a lot of textbooks. The favors is easy, easy to remember because it tells you exactly where to put the leg. Next, I think okay. we have overs. And we'll, while you're here, let me do hip quadrant. So hip quadrant is not a scouring test, okay? So you're not going to be weight bearing and compressing. You're gonna encapsulate the leg around you here so you're holding it, but I'm not putting my weight through it. Okay? It's different from the scouring test. So what I like to do is I'm thinking of kind of plotting my points on that curve. Okay, so I'm going to bring her in to hip flexion and adduction. You okay here? So I'm just kind of slowly working my way in, and then I'm going to start to move more laterally. You okay? All the way out. And what you're going to find is a lot of people, a lot of healthy people, have pain right when you're coming into that anterior medial position where there's just a little bit more compression in there. Okay, you'll get some impingement in there. Um, and next week we'll learn how to mobilize and get that range of motion better. You can also always change the angle by adding your rotations as you do the quadrant. So if you do the quadrant and you can't reproduce anything, then start to play with the angles a little bit of rotation as you go through. Okay? So it's basically starting in flexion and adduction, moving along, plotting your points, and I'm really pushing her into that range because I want to see how it reacts when I'm compressing those tissues and the joint. Okay. Next for overcast, I'm going to have you lie on your side and face them. I'm going to have you scoot all the way back toward me. Okay, so the bottom leg is going to be bent, and you're going to pull it way up toward your chest and just hold on to it there. And the reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that she's not going to get a lot of rotation in her lumbar spine. So by stabilizing here, it just helps to keep her more neutral back here. So you're going to see this test done two ways. I'm going to take my hand here, stabilize at the pelvis, and bring her forward because I'm not going to let her rotate back into rotation. I'm going to bring the leg back. Okay. 
You all right? And then I'm going to just let the leg go. And what I'm looking for <laughs> is to see the length of the tensor fascia in the IT band to see if when I drop her leg down, it drops below the table. Okay? If it's tight, she's going to be stuck up here. So you're also going to see this test with a bent knee. This way, and then I'm going to let you go. Just kind of let that leg hang. Okay, she's a little tight. A little tight there. And we already predicted that from the Thomas test a little bit. Some people really, when you pull them back, this is it. This is all they're going to get. Okay. So you just want to cue them as that as far as you can go to make sure they're not holding it up. Mm -hmm. When you did that one, like straight leg, it looks like she wasn't that. She wasn't that tight, yeah, exactly. And like what she's doing when she is a straight leg, she's rotating okay. a lot more. And that's why I tend to do it with a bent okay. knee okay. because I feel like I can control the hip a lot easier and I'm not way down here controlling the limb. Okay. But you will see it both ways, okay? All right, that's it for special tests. Go ahead and practice.